Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 16th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We still see a continuous stream of exploits against the Drupal vulnerability coming into our honeypots. I did talk about this a little bit on Friday. We saw at this point mostly sort of indicators and one coin miner. By now we have a bunch of additional exploits, in particular backdoors, in addition to, of course, more crypto coin miners. Also at least one exploit attempt that looked for Windows servers running Drupal it started actually a little PowerShell script to then download additional malware. Since about Friday, we have a little bit short of 8,000 exploit attempts using this particular vulnerability against our honeypots. Patching Android phones has always been difficult and kind of a mixed bag because a lot of vendors didn't bother with actually publishing updated versions of Android for their phones. And in addition, carriers sometimes delayed these updates. But apparently that's not the only problem. It appears that some vendors will actually display a current patch level, even though the phone hasn't actually been patched for common vulnerability. Two researchers from security research labs just wrote a little tool actually to look at the binaries on the phone and try to identify which patches were actually installed and they found a lot of them missing. Well, uh, they actually made this tool public now. It's called Snoop Snitch. So you can install it on your phone to actually get a more accurate assessment as to which patches your phone is missing. On a good side, they actually tried to exploit a lot of these vulnerabilities and were not successful in part because due to some of the additional compile time protections that's built into a lot of the Android binaries, it's not quite as easy to exploit these different vulnerabilities. And Intel released a patch for a vulnerability that affects is serial peripheral interconnect or SPI flash. This is part of the CPU and used as part of the boot process. Now, Intel states that an attacker would be able to overwrite part of this memory and cause a denial of service. Lenovo in its version of the Bulletin also notes that there is a small possibility of code execution in this case. Either way, Intel released a patch. Now you will not get the patch directly from Intel. You have to check with your motherboard or system provider to release the patch to you. A wide range of CPUs is affected everything back to the fifth generation Intel core processors. A number of Xeon families are also affected by this as well as Atom, Celeron. So really more or less the entire range of Intel CPUs produced recently is affected by this vulnerability. And when it comes to obscure data exfiltration methods that nobody really uses in the wild, then the Ben Gurion University of the Negev never disappoints. The latest method that they came up with is data exfiltration via power lines. Essentially, what they're proposing here is that on a system, by spiking the CPU load, you may be able to draw more power, which then, of course, can be detected at a remote electric panel. I guess a cool extension of this work would be if uh, this particular modulation could also then be detected remotely via wireless means, essentially using the power line sort of as an antenna. Tomorrow I'll be on my way to San Francisco to attend RSA and I'll be speaking again with Alan and James and Ed on Wednesday at our annual panel, if you're interested, should start at 11.15 a.m. I typically carry some stickers with me if anybody's interested. Now the panel itself tends to be too large to effectively sort of hand out stickers and the like. So just stop me when you see me and uh, hopefully I won't run out too quickly. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.